So as we just talked about with the idea of John Collins moving on and all this good kind of stuff, okay, you don't get out of the luxury tax to get back into it. So Landry Fields can tell me all the things in the world about, well, we're communicative and we can do this and we can get in the luxury tax if we need to, but but we don't have to be a luxury tax. And all these kind of spin narratives that are out there right now. You know, I don't believe that Tony Wrestler in these Hawks are going to be them in the luxury tax when all is said and done. I, I don't think that they are going to get themselves back into the luxury tax, at least for right now, until they see kind of how things are, are going to play themselves out. But I don't think that they are going to get themselves right back in the luxury tax. Like, why would you have made moves to get out of the luxury tax and dump salary just to get back into it? Again, especially if your roster isn't isn't where you think it needs to be, you know, the roster could be better, but if it's not where you think it needs to be, which is what we've always heard from Tony Wrestler, right? That that why would you get back into that? So I don't believe for a second that they're going back into the luxury tax now that they've just gotten themselves out of that. Like, why would you dig yourself out of debt and get your credit cards paid off just to go back and spend more money and get yourself back into debt? I, I don't, I, I don't, that, that part of it, I don't buy. So that's why I say, I mean, when we ask the question about, okay, well, who do you believe in this and the other? Yeah, sure. I think that they, again, when Landry Field says, oh yeah, we can get ourselves in luxury tax. Well, they were already there. They were already in the luxury tax. There's no getting into it. You were already in the luxury tax. Now the idea is, can you dig yourself out of it? Can, can you make moves that get you out of the luxury tax? They did that. They did that. But then you're going to tell me that they're going to go right back in to the luxury tax? See, I'm not buying that. And again, it, it is odd that three days after, you know, three days or whatever, you know, after that we heard Brian Windhorst say on ESPN that there's a mandate to get under the luxury tax for the Atlanta Hawks, that that's exactly what happened. In a deal that didn't make the Hawks better, in a deal that, you know, again, didn't add players and, and swap guys that, that make this roster better. You basically got a 37, 38 year old player. That's not going to be here in a second round pick. I, I call it what it is, but do I believe that the Hawks are going to be a luxury tax team now that they just got themselves out of all that? No, I don't believe that. I don't believe that they're going back in, you know, and again, most of your roster is signed up. I mean, your roster kind of, you know, right now that with the starters in place and this, that, and the other, you're going to replace John Collins, but you're going to do that, you know, probably at a nominal cost. But again, I would, I would love to go get a Cal Kuzma or somebody like that to fill that spot or a Pascal Siakam or whatever. I, I'm all for, I'm, I'm all for the moves that we're going to make because my big fear was, again, I talked about running it back and, and I did not want to run it back, but at the same time, I've looked at, uh, Okay, are we going to be able to move some of these contracts or this, that, and the other? And, and again, the Hawks, I, I don't, the Hawks did the right thing. The Hawks did the right thing as far as moving on from John Collins, as far as freeing up salary cap, as far as freeing up a roster space. All of that's good. But don't sell me on the idea that we're going to turn right back around and now we're going to get ourselves in the luxury tax. Again, unless Giannis or Embiid or Joker becomes suddenly available, I don't think we're getting ourselves back in the luxury tax. Unless one of those guys we can, unless we can trade Clint or sorry Clint Capella or DeAndre Hunter for Giannis or Joker, unless we can make a trade for one of those guys, we're not going back in the luxury tax. Now, again, we may be surprised when when all is said and done and we look at this roster and we say to ourselves, OK, you know, we, we, we decided that we're going to dip our toe in the luxury tax and and this, then the other. Because, again, I, I don't know how you build a winner around a super max player and not dip your toe into the luxury tax. Can it be done? Sure. You, you have a roster right now that if you add a small piece, you can be a non luxury tax team. But how much better are you? How much in the deep waters are you willing to swim to get yourself over the hump? 
you know, right now, are we better than Miami? Are we better than, you know, Philadelphia? Are we better than the Milwaukee Bucks? You know, Boston Celtics? I mean, are we, as a roster, better than what those teams are? I, I don't know that we are, not by losing John Collins. For, for all of Collins' flaws and warts and different things like that, he's certainly a better player than a second-round pick and Rudy Gay would be. So, again, there's value there. But I don't believe that this team is going to get itself right back into debt, into the luxury tax, just to pay that kind of money. Because, again, it's not easy at times to get yourself out of the luxury tax once you start to get yourself into it. And that's why, again, you know, unless you're going to dump more salary, you know, Capella or Hunter or somebody like that, or Bogey even, you know, unless you're going to get into the in, into that more dump mode, then I don't believe that the Hawks are going to just magically turn this thing around and dive headfirst into the luxury tax again. So again, we may be surprised when all is said and done. I hope we're pleasantly surprised. But this next move, you know, I, again, is it going to make us better? Sure. Anybody that we add will make us a better roster. But I, again, where I said, you know, in the last segment that I don't believe that uh, if Quinn Snyder wanted John Collins, that he wouldn't be here. I don't believe that Tony Ressler is going to get in the luxury tax again after they just got themselves out. And make no mistake about it, okay? The, 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 so there's no confusion. If Tony Ressler doesn't want to be in the luxury tax, Landry Fields can say all the things that he wants. Oh, my group has the power to get us in the luxury tax and all that kind of stuff. If 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 Tony Ressler doesn't want to get in the luxury tax, they won't be in the luxury tax. <clears throat> Landry Fields may have final say over the roster and who's going to be here and this, that, and the other. What he's not going to have final say over is how much does he spend? Because again, if it, that's going to come from the owner at the end of the day, you, you can, you can have all, again, you can have all the narratives in the world that you want. Oh yeah. We got the freedom to do this, this, then the other, but if the owner doesn't want to get into the luxury tax or he questions the idea of getting the luxury tax, they won't be in the luxury tax. That's how it works. Again, we may not like that, but the guy who spends all the money and writes the checks every two weeks, if he says, I'm not getting in, in the luxury tax, we're not going to be in it, no matter what Landry Fields wants or doesn't want or this, that, and the other. So make no mistake about it that Landry Fields may call the shots as far as basketball, but if Tony Ressler and Nick Ressler say, it's not good business for us to be in the luxury tax, that's not going to happen. And I don't believe that they got out of those waters just to jump right back in and get themselves in the luxury tax.